Welcome to the PropTech Podcast. It's Kylie Davis here, and I'm delighted to be your host as we explore the brave new world where technology and real estate collide. I passionately believe we need to create and grow a sense of community between the innovators and real estate agents, and sharing our stories is a great way to do that. The aim of each episode is to introduce listeners to a prop tech innovator who is pushing the boundaries of what's possible and to explore the issues and challenges raised by the tech and how they can create amazing property experiences. And my guest in this episode is Matthew Webster from WebIT and ListOnce. Now, WebIT is a first generation prop tech. It started about 20 years ago. And one of its first contributions to real estate tech in Australia was a portal website for agents, which went on to become realestateview.com.au, which is now owned by REIB. And WebIT continued to consult on the IT needs of larger groups to this day. Now, their most popular product today is ListOnce, which builds the data architecture that links real estate agents, CRMs, websites, and the myriad of apps and technologies that agents now use and bring them all together so that agencies can do more with their data. So here to tell us all about it is Matthew Webster. Welcome to the PropTech Podcast. Thanks very much, Kylie, for having me. No, it's great. Um, And look, what we do on the PropTech Podcast is we always start with an elevator pitch and I'm dying to hear yours, so bust it out. (laughs) Thanks, Kylie. Um, Well, uh, List Once uh, and WebIT, which was formerly WebTech, um, has been around for a long time, uh, uh, 20 years last year, and um, I'll, I'll mention that a little bit later in the podcast about how we came about. But basically, List Once, the software, um, helps agents streamline their data and listings management. Um, I can sum it up as simple as that. Mm-hmm. There's, um, there's the core List Once product, which has uh, which is about eight years old now, and, and it's trademarked and it's basically made up of two bundled solutions, uh, the first part being website powering via APIs, which is basically an off-the-shelf property search engine um, a bunch of modules, which can be installed, uh, for want of a better word, in any website, mm-hmm. no matter the size or the, the design or the how many integrations and which developer. So that's a, an off-the-shelf property search engine. And the second part being all the integrations and multi-loading. So we've now got um, well over 150 integrations with all the CRMs and, and web to print and automated marketing providers and so forth. Um, so that's the, the, the core of this once. And then there's some other modules like the data warehouse uh, module called load and report once, uh, et cetera. Um, so that's the software side of our business. Hmm, okay. So you have been in the industry for, for quite a long time. You're one of the original, I guess, the, the first generation of, of developers in the prop tech space. How did how did List One start? What gave you the original idea? Because data and listings are just like absolutely core to everything that real estate agents do. It is core. Um, it's sometimes not the sexiest area, but um, but so <laughs> important. But so important to get right, you know. And uh, I guess we're very very proud of the. Um, uh, the reputation we've built up in terms of stability and reliability and getting that part of the, um, the prop tech puzzle right. Um, and we're very much technical technical specialists in data and integrations. Um, we're not um, so much on the digital marketing side. Um, and we've got a website development team as well. But an interesting story as to how we, we started. Look, I've only been with the business for eight years. I've joined my brother, David, um, about um, about seven or eight years ago, uh, but the business has been around since 90, 1999, so over twenty years, uh, which is a long time in in technology and prop tech. Yeah. Um, and the starting story is that um, back in the late nineties, uh, David, uh, my brother, the founder, he's a PhD in electrical engineering, uh, or was, and um, still has his PhD, obviously, and was at UTS at the time, University of Technology, Sydney. Uh, was one of the youngest ever lecturers there, so a really you know bright cookie. Um, certainly the nerd of the family, unlike me, mm-hmm. <laughs> the real techie. And he'd sort of observed what um, uh, REA had done in in the previous couple of years. So this was sort of mid to to late nineties, and I think REA launched in ninety five or ninety six from memory. Mm-hmm. Um, and between lecturing at UTS. 
he decided to just build a, a kind of high traffic capacity property portal and do what REA had done. And he called it House Call. And now being an academic, he, you know, he's not, he wasn't particularly commercially minded. So uh, he then offered to give that complete portal software platform to some of the real estate institutes. Right. He didn't ask for anything in return. He's just, you know, just wasn't that way inclined. Was just a, you know, a, a scientist, academic engineer. Mm-hmm. Um, and he thought, well, if I, you know, if I've proven I can build that, I'll just give it to someone who can maybe use it. At the time, the institutes weren't much interested. Uh, probably well, just didn't probably understand it. But then, uh, twelve months later, one of the CEOs of, I think it was the South Australian Institute called him up and said, hey, you know, I've just been at a conference in the US and realised the potential of, of this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this internet thing, it could fly. <laughs> this could work. <laughs> You're onto something here. And uh, and obviously they also had recognised, <clears throat> excuse me, what REA had been doing. So from there, um, a, a sort of commercial arrangement was struck up with the Real Estate Institute of South Australia and then that CEO went to the, to the Real Estate Institute of Victoria and took what's now Real Estate View, the property portal, um, across there. And, and that was born in the early, you know, in, in 2000, 2001. David left academia and established WebTech at the time, which became WebIT. And, of course, uh, Real Estate View um, is still operates strongly today for almost 20 years and still got some of our core software in the back end of Real Estate View. So um, it's an interesting story. And um, uh, obviously from there, um, uh, David um, sold the whole real estate, uh, sorry, the whole property portal platform to the Real Estate Institute of Victoria in, in 2011. And then the business was a bit of a shell and had to be reinvented. So in 11, 12, uh, is when List Once was invented, and it was pretty progressive at the time. And it was born of the need for the website powering, the search engine APIs, and the single data entry uh, multi loading, and of course, web development and those sort of things. So that's the story of how uh, Web IT and, and List Once came about uh, 20 years ago. I, I love these stories about the sort of the recent history of our industry because it helps you understand why things are like what they are now, I guess, you know, where, where we've come from and and the innovation that has fueled different pockets of development across the across the country in, in real estate tech. Um, so thanks for sharing that. So what I really want to understand, though, what is the problem that List Once solves? Well, um, it's, it's around data management and data movement, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, so um, every agency needs to build their prop tech stack. We call that a prop tech hub. And um, once an agency or a group, we tend to work with the, uh, some of the sort of medium to larger size groups, mm-hmm. understand the architecture of data movement and data aggregation, and how that all fits in with um, uh, your digital marketing plan and and, um, and, and so forth and, and your website, um, then, you know, you, you begin to understand the importance of um, uh, the utilisation of data, the movement of data, the storage, the aggregation, the secure um, uh, storage of data. And so that's the, the main, um, I guess, problem, benefit we're providing, uh, problem we're solving, it's around data and listings management. Yeah. So so most agents have, whether they like it or recognise it or not, this huge pool of data sort of underneath their business and it can be really well organised and sort of pulling in the right, you know, all, all, all working to be driving your business and fueling your growth or it can be sloshing around just sort of doing not very much in the background if you haven't got it organised, I'm assuming. Exactly Is right, Kylie. Yeah. yeah, a lot of agencies are still in that in that position where there's disparate um, uh, data sets sitting around and um, it just needs to be pulled together. And with, the, I guess, the proliferation of, of prop tech um, suppliers and products, um, it becomes even more important that someone can help them put the whole puzzle together and the architecture of their of their digital operations, and particularly their, their data movement and management, and um, and make all those different um, providers talk to each other. 
Mm-hmm. And so that typically happens with APIs, which is um, uh, just an interface between um, programs and so forth and products. Um, and that's where our expertise lies in those integrations and APIs. Mm. So effectively what you guys do is that you help agents make sense of the data that they've got and then you organ- help them get it organised and able to connect and use and utilise other products out there with that data. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And we've always been about collaboration, um, you know, since day one. And so we're, you know, we're delighted to work with all the different providers and, and, and make the, the model hum, if you like, uh, for an agency group um, because there's some terrific products and services out there, um, but they do need to be all connected properly and it does need to be pushing and pulling in data um, to, to make that happen. Mm, okay. So, so there is a lot of complexity out there in the, in the industry, isn't there? Like um, when I was having a look through your website, there's, you know, we, we, and we talk as, as a prop tech industry of things like, you know, well, everyone knows what a CRM is, but then there's APIs and XMLs and SAS and all these awful, awful <laughs> acronyms. I hate acronyms. Yeah. What, what does it all actually, what does it all actually mean? Well, we try and make it much simpler for, for clients and, and explain all those terms and how the architecture work. And I've got to say that clients these days, that is, you know, particularly medium and, and large groups, are quite savvy with their prop tech, um, mm-hmm. as you would know. Yep. Um, I contributed to a, a good little white paper recently with our, with our friends at Agentbox and, and um, they had broken down the real estate transaction. This was mainly on the sales side to about 10 stages from memory. And then they just basically identified, you know, a bunch of um, tried and tested supplies in each of those areas. And um, so, you know, I think we're getting better at um, mapping um, and and providing the architecture of how it all hangs together for for agencies. And then they understand the terminology and the acronyms and, um, and, and, you know, can can have a really effective prop tech hub, as we as we call it. Our job is to reduce complexity. Our mm-hmm. job is to to explain some of these principles and help them build a really effective tech stack. And you know, personally, we're we're completely CRM agnostic and very sort of proud of that positioning. So we like to think we bring a lot of objectivity to the table. Mm. So so I'm I'm on the south coast at the moment in our house, and we uh, we have a tank we have a water tank and we have an awful lot of roof space and an awful lot of downpipes and the way I like to think of it is that data inside a real estate agency is a little bit like rain hitting the roof like it's coming from everywhere you don't know what angle it's going to come from but as long as you've got that architecture in place to drive all of that data towards the tank so that you can then reuse that you know reuse the water or you reuse the resource that's going into it um, if it's just landing on the roof and it's going on the garden, you can't capture it. It's not. It's not useful to you. You really need it to be sort of driven towards one central source. So is that is that a <laughs> silly but rich, that's a great that analogy? <laughs> that is a, that is a simple and a great analogy. You know, how, where's your data coming from? How are you going to aggregate it? And then where, what are you going to use it for? Mm, mm. Um, it's as simple as that, and it's become so much. Uh, better and easier to do these days. Um, you know, a lot of the CRMs are very open with with, with their APIs and, and so forth. So we can not only pull data out, but push data back in. Um, mm. And how that integrates with the website or websites um, and all the other great providers out there, whether it be AI or, or automated marketing and so forth. So, you know, we we integrate. <coughs> excuse me. We integrate with everyone, with, with all different groups and providers, um, and and that's become a lot more doable in recent years. Mm. So, tell me about your CRM panel um, that you that you run for agency groups, and and what does that let agents and and their officers do? Uh, yeah. Well, look, we don't run the CRM panel as such. We just uh, help facilitate it, um, uh, and. Um, I guess I'll, I'll put a shout out here to one of our clients, um, Doug Hutchinson from the Barry Plant Group, who really pioneered, I think pioneered this model about eight years ago, and he's helped us to roadmap it. And, and it's basically come from a place where there's such a, a choice of CRMs and property management providers, property management software providers now, as I'm sure you'd agree, 
so many um, um, good solutions and, and good options out there, and choice is good. Mm-hmm. Um, within the, the sort of larger and multi-office groups and franchise groups and so forth, uh, a lot of the principals and officers want to use the CRM that they want to use and not be sort of dictated to as to what CRM they should be, they should be using. Uh, it, it, you know, um, and it, it's probably an ideal world with one uh, CRM platform across 100 offices, but it might not fit the needs and, and, and wants of the officers and principals and, 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 and key agents. Uh, so this model um, kind of provides, and, and thirdly, it's about aggregated data. This model uh, with a panel of CRMs um, is sort of the best of all worlds where you might have two, three or four uh, CRMs on your panel um, and that's a procured panel, so, um, you know, set up by head office. And uh, But the, the middleware, the list once or load, which is this once agency data hub uh, sort of software sits um, uh, uh, next to or above the, the, the CRMs and aggregates a lot of the data from the various CRMs and provides that to head office. So head office gets what they need whilst the officers are using the CRM that they want. Right. Uh, and that's um, you know, just that, that's explained it very in a simple, in a very simple way. But I guess that's the, the key benefit of that um, CRM, CRM agnostic uh, CRM panel model. Right. We've been, and we've been we've been building that with numerous um, agency groups, to be honest. And I remember, I remember a little story a couple of years ago. One of the the big groups we've been working with for many years, the um, um, you know the CEO said he was adamant that they didn't want to use multiple CRMs and wouldn't ever do that. And um, you know now a couple of years on, they've got four, <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of um, probably not by choice, but by um, the ever changing nature of the industry and the, the wants, desires of, of officers and and and, um, and franchisees mm. to be as effective as they they possibly can be. Yeah, yeah. giving it, we're we're living in such an interesting age, aren't we? Where we've we've just recent. I think we're coming out of, and a lot of the tension and stress we're feeling is because we've come. We're coming out of this kind of very up and down, like do it this way, author, authoritative mode of working towards a much more collaborative, you know, command and control way of working towards a much more collaborative and cooperative which is a lot more chaotic. But, in fact, you, if you put good infrastructure in place sitting behind it, it doesn't really matter how people work because you're capturing all the information that you need to capture and and pooling it and then feeding it feeding it back. Spot on, spot on. And the opportunities are boundless. You know, it's, it's going from a clo- almost a closed environment to open source. And, yeah, yeah. And that's that's brilliant. And, and collaboration just drives the... The the, the, uh, the innovation and um, the quality and all of those sort of things. So it's very it, it's it's fantastic to see because even five years ago, Kylie, it wasn't it wasn't like that. Mm. And now let's hear a word from our sponsors. For almost sixteen years, Direct Connect has made moving easy for over one point two million renters and homeowners by arranging connections to a wide range of services, from electricity and gas to internet and pay TV. With a national team of local account managers who are experts in the industry, Direct Connect are there to support your real estate business with competitive rewards for every successful connection, plus an industry-leading rewards program. The connection process is simple, and Direct Connect's always-on guarantee ensures your customers will be connected on the day they move in. Direct Connect offers a range of market-leading suppliers and Direct Connect has now made it even easier than ever to send connections directly integrating with MRI Software's property tree. So in just a few clicks while processing a tenancy, you can send the connection details through and get your customers connected. To make the right connection and find out how Direct Connect can make moving easy for you and easy for your customers, visit agents.directconnect.com.au or call one 300 
And look, I'm going to ask you a little bit of a question without notice, Matt. So um, let me know how you go with it because we're, we are talking about data and there has been this whole conversation and we're going to talk about REAP in a minute, but there has been this whole kind of ongoing conversation in the real estate industry, well, who owns their data? What What's your thoughts on on that? Who owns data in real estate? Well, the consumer owns their own data. Um, <laughs> always. Oh, very diplomatic. <laughs> uh, always, always. Um, but, you know, the, the agencies have checks and balances in place uh, as to how they can and use data, and that's very important. And and people that move around data have, have clear um, uh, boundaries and principles in place and, and rules and regulations and, and so forth in line with, with, with government requirements. So it's a very important area that uh, that data uh, ownership, for want of a better word, um, and you've got to stick to the rules. And we've mm. seen some groups, and we've worked with some groups that that haven't and have been a bit lax with that. And um, you know that's that's not good enough to to mm. want, so. And so, does List Ones help with the management and the and the security and the and the rights of that data? Yeah, well, you know, we've obviously got in our um, terms and conditions for the, the data um, policies and principles and, and particularly data security. That's a that's a really critical area. So being technical experts, we're all about um, elements of speed and, and QA and, and, and security and, and reliability and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, definitely you know, that's, that's a very important piece for, for this once, which is trademark software. It's been around for a long time. We've got to protect our interests and the interests of our of our customers and clients. Yep, fantastic. So, so what's the business model behind this once? Is it subscription or is it ticket clip or what's the model? Yeah, it's um, pretty simple. Um, we've got basically three broad divisions. The the software as a service, uh, which is this once and more recently Load, uh, which um, as I said stands for this once Agency Data Hub. Uh, that's all the data APIs and integrations. So that's the SaaS, and uh, there's about six or seven hundred offices on that um, on that software. Uh, we've got the website and portal development division. Um, we tend to focus on bigger, sort of high traffic, multi office websites. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got we've actually got a big sort of modular uh, back end platform model. Which we can adapt for any for any front end design, which works well and keeps the costs down for for big groups. Um, we've also got eight active high traffic portals at the moment in Australia and around the world because we we've, we've got a joint venture with a group called Digital Classifieds Group. So we've got portals in um, you know Cambodia and um, Mongolia and Nepal and all sorts of places where, where our foundation software is is powering that. So even though we've I only got around six or seven hundred offices on the list once software. There's about five thousand or more, actually, about five and a half thousand offices using the all all the software, the, the portal software and list once software. So a huge amount of data. So it's a good question you asked previously about those data principles and, and, and um, policies and privacy and so forth. Uh, because we've got so much data running through our software across the portals and the uh, and list once. And then the third area being, um, I guess I'd call it consumer-facing products. And this is pretty exciting for us because we've been so focused on agent and agency products for so many years. Um, but more recently, we've sort of moved into more consumer-facing products, still obviously provided through the agents uh, who provide it onto their, their, their customers but products like Ad Tracker and Report Once and My Property Pass, which is a digital wallet product. So hoping that's sort of the, the way of the future for us as well. And and um, But we were actually told, Kylie, a couple of years ago that from an independent consultant or two consultants. And then also from our, our mutual friend, Ash at Active, Active Pipe, actually, when we were having a big long chat to him, David and I, we were told by a few people that we were spread too thin in terms of how okay. many pro- in terms of how many products we we had, yep. and and it's it's easy to get fall into that trap when you've been around for a while to do things mm-hmm. for, for lots of different people and groups and yeah so we're only a small team of sort of you know fifteen twenty staff but um, uh, we were spread a bit thin so we tried to streamline the business and 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 um, pull back a bit on on too much product development. 
Cool. Well, look, Ash is the king of focus. So uh, shout out to Ash. (laughs) <laughs> who I'm working with a lot at the moment. So, you know, <laughs> full disclosure. Um, so so how have you guys, so there's two questions that come out of this that I'm dying to ask you. I, I really want us to talk about how you've come, how you've found COVID and uh, although we're all exhausted by talking about it, but 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 what is, what, what have, how have you found agents and their adoption of technology during this phase? Do you think it's helped or hindered our tech adoption? Or, or coming back to core principles of, okay, right, what do we need to do to get through this and, and actually really build that infrastructure? I think it was strong anyway, but yeah. it has accelerated the appreciation of um, technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, all the good agency groups in the last five years anyway have appreciated how important prop tech and technology is. Yeah. Uh, it's not as if a light bulb just came on because COVID did. Yeah. Um, but certainly the, the greater appreciation is there and looking for different ways to do things. So I've been pretty impressed with, with a lot of our clients and how they've handled things in, in difficult circumstances because, you know, most of them have seen their businesses be affected by, you know, anywhere between 10 and 20% up to, you know, 50% on, on the number of listings and so mm-hmm. forth. So mm-hmm. that's really, really significant. Um, yeah. You know, personally, we've tried to really help our, our clients and customers with, um, you know, adding uh, products and features uh, free of charge. Um, we, we put a fee freeze on on our software. Uh, we'd been frozen for, um, we hadn't had an increase for a year or 18 months anyway. We just um, extended that for another 12 months. And we've got a, an across-the-board web dev discount. So we've just tried to uh, help with those sort of um, initiatives, which hopefully help in a, in a small way with their with their profitability and cost savings. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really important. So I guess, you know, any advice to less established prop tech businesses, because, you know, we were so fortunate we've got such a, a large and diverse customer base but you've just got to ask, what can you do for your customers and clients right now? What, what other technical and commercial problems can you potentially assist them with? How, can you, you need to show them that you genuinely understand and care about their business. You're not just there to, to sell them another, you know, uh, prop tech feature or product. You've, you've mm. got to add more value and, and benefit and, and now's the time. Mm. And and I've been impressed with how much innovation we've seen from the sector and uh, you know, product developments coming out, and the generosity and and empathy that the indus- that the tech industry has had for customers. I think there has been a huge focus on save the relationships and save the cust- You know, work with customers and to, for everyone to get through it all. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Now I want to really so Web IT has been a big supporter of the real estate industry partners uh, or REAP. And before we mentioned, you mentioned about how you have, you know, consumer facing, um, been doing some consumer facing work. So for listeners who don't know what REAP is, um, tell us a little bit about that and what stage it's at. Because I've always, I've always found this a fascinating part of the real estate tech industry. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Well, look, uh, REAP or Real Estate Industry Partners um, has been born out of the the old, well, the Squiz portal, yep. which you might uh, remember. Um, I do. Which we, um, we sort of stepped in and rebuilt in 2015-16 um, after the first version of the, the portal didn't go so well. Um, and uh, admittedly, it's not a, a, you know, a, con- a, a hugely successful consumer-facing portal, but what's happened is the, the, the group that, um, that runs that, um, it's, an, it's a completely industry-owned group, has now pivoted and um, uh, really pushed forward with uh, a, more, a, a much broader industry leadership type initiative. So industry-led, industry-owned, um, all-around leadership for uh, the Australian real estate industry. And they're focusing on a couple of uh, several main areas being Advocacy with the state governments, working with the institutes, mind you, which is really important. Again, it's a it's a good collaboration model. Um, mm-hmm. 
national marketing, you know, stronger promotion of the benefit and value of good agents and industry. Uh, that they call that industry voice. Um, office profitability, how can we uh, make offices more uh, sustainable? Uh, innovation, including prop tech and industry data, and that's where we're sort of coming in and helping on that side. And professional standards. Um, and it's about working in with what um, uh, other groups and uh, the institutes and agents are doing really well, uh, but just plugging the gaps in terms of uh, industry leadership. So about you know the sustainability of the of the industry, and um, we're really proud to be working with REIP because they're doing great things in a transparent way. It's being uh, headed up by Mike Green from Harcourts International and Dan White from Ray White Group, and there's a there's a board of directors there, um, Peter Hanscom, Tony Brazier, Angus Rain, etc. And they're all working really um, openly and, and and in consultation with what we're calling the industry leaders, so about two or 300 people that have been identified, to just try and work out what the industry needs to do from a leadership perspective um, to, to ensure that, you know, it's a really sustainable and innovative uh, industry. Mm. Well, it, it's great to see such big hitters laying down their arms and actually, you know, breaking bread together to talk about the future of the industry. I think that's a that's a fabulous initiative just in itself. Let, is the so the emphasis is no longer on an alternative portal or that's something that's kind of just happening in the background. It's happening in the background, Kylie. The listings portal's still still operating. It's a very strong um, portal. It's got a lot of um, agency offices registered uh, around about 6,000. Um, it's got a lot of active listings. Um, recently did a joint venture partnership with um, uh, On The House. So it's almost like a bundled type um, property portal uh, initiative, all free, um, unlimited listings, sales and, and rental listings, unlimited. So there's a bit of a plug for squeezing On The House. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I guess that that uh, portal concept might pivot a bit um, and you know yourself that the, it's so critical to look at all the different uh, mediums and channels, you know, social media marketing, search engine marketing, uh, automated marketing, et cetera. Um, portals are still extremely important and uh, a very important piece of the, uh, the puzzle, but there's so many other parts to the puzzle as well to put together. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if we pivot um, that uh, listings portal um, uh, um, platform to be something a little bit uh, broader and, and probably more innovative around data. Yeah. Okay. So, because I guess the question the the question that was often asked when Squiz first came out is, oh, what do consumers need another place to go to find? Like, is there any point or purpose in trying to compete with realestate.com and Domain when they are so far ahead of the pack? Um, you know, in terms of consumer traffic, that I mean, that's always been the chewy thing that's hard to that's hard to compete with, isn't it? Um, well, I don't think um, they were particularly trying to. Um, and there's a lot of um, portals out there, and, and good portals and free portals. And yeah. um, you know, uh, that's terrific. And um, if if it, it keeps you know the competitive forces at, at, <laughs> at bay, sort of thing. But we've got you know we've got a clear standout winner and and second. Um, place at the moment with the yep. listings portals, but there's much there's 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 so many other innovative things being done around uh, portals and and um, uh, you know marketing of listings and so forth. Mm. So and and that is the thing, isn't it? Like sometimes you actually there's no point sort of just turning up your toes and giving up the ghost on it and saying, oh well, you know, REA and Domain sort of own that space, so there's nothing we can do. We just have to to go with it by even just trying to challenge them and to understand the tech space that they're working in. Um, and I and I think for the REAP board of directors and, you know, part of their their tech learning journey was around that learning about what works, what doesn't work and, and the power of aggregating all of those listing data, you know, maybe that turns into something completely different that the realestate.com and domain were never going to do. Well, that's right. The aggregation of data, again, which is our sweet spot, I mean, that's that's um, such a powerful um, concept. 
Mm. And th- this needs to, wh- whichever way it goes, and it's not my place to say, I guess, you know, I think Mike Green will probably have more to say about this in the next few months. Um, but, you know, it needs to represent the entire industry. That's all stakeholders, all the independent officers, uh, not just the groups. And that's where I've been really impressed with with REAP. They've pivoted, they've, they've listened, they've consulted, and it's it's representing the small agent uh, up to the biggest groups and how can we put some of the, um, uh, I guess, innovation uh, back in the hands of the industry because it's mm. been pulled out of the industry um, on numerous occasions and it keeps happening and the industry keeps losing its, its um, I guess, its power's the wrong word, but it's, it's, its competitive advantages by giving away uh, what they have and what they can actually develop themselves. Mm. So um, yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting journey, and um, I'm sure it'll be there'll be some speed bumps <laughs> along the way. But um, a good, it's it's great to be part of it. We've we've tried to support the industry for for 20 years, and and um, so delighted to try and continue that. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a it's a great initiative that um, that everyone's getting stuck in. As a real estate agent, you know you need to be doing more content marketing, but creating posts for social media, creating videos and reports is hard work, lots of hard work, and it takes time. So that's why you need Homeprezzo. If you're a typical agent posting one or two social media posts a week, Homeprezzo can save you between seventy five to hundred hours a year. How many more properties could you sell with if you had that time back? Homeprezzo can help you create engaging, informative videos about how the property market in your local suburb is performing. Plus, it makes creating suburb reports, rental videos for landlords, and social media infographics an absolute piece of cake. If you can type in a suburb or type an address, you can create a Prezzo using Homeprezzo in just a few minutes. Listeners to the Pop Tech podcast receive a 14-day free trial. Now that's twice as long as the normal free trial. So go to homeprezzo.com.au and click the sign up button and use the code PropTech to get your extended free trial or click the link in our show notes. So let's talk just for a second about advertising trends because, you know, we're, we're moving almost very quickly away from print advertising altogether and into that digital space. How has that affected List Once or Web IT, Webit? Yeah, that's a that's a, a great question. Um, given the rise of you know social and, and content, uh, which you know you're, you're particularly so good at, and uh, and SEM and automated marketing and so forth. But look, um, it hasn't affected us a great deal um, because we're pushing and pulling data everywhere anyway, and listings, um, and we've got a great respect for all the different marketing channels and mediums. Um, there's some fantastic products and providers out there. And we simply need to, you know, collaborate and integrate with, with, with the best of them for the benefit of the agents in the industry. Um, again, it's about us helping to build that prop tech stack with all the different providers or prop tech hub. Um, so it hasn't affected us. It's only been positive for us, Kyle. Mm, fantastic. Okay. So, look, what do you think that the next five years holds for real estate generally? Well, that's All a big question, isn't I know. It? <laughs> oh, <laughs> How no, long have you got? <laughs> I don't feel qualified to answer it, but anyway, <laughs> some of our clients would be much better qualified to, to answer that. I've got some, such, such some really smart people we work with and, you know, we've been blessed. We've been given some terrific ideas and concepts from some of our clients, you know, as I mentioned, Doug Hutchinson earlier and, and Jamie Owen and Nelson Alexander and Peter Hanscom at Bell and so forth. They're just clever people, you know, that that come up with good ideas and we try and then run with them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Yep. uh, But they're the clients you want. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You've got to work shoulder to shoulder with your clients and really listen and and then, and then work out, you know, how we solve some problems. Uh, But I guess um, it's a much more savvy and professional industry now. Um, Technology has enabled a lot of that. Professional standards have lifted. The industry has attracted a lot of talented specialists. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, you know, these multi-dimensional executives who are who are demanding change, and so it's really coming of age, I think. Um, I guess judging by what some of our more innovative uh, national group clients and prestige group clients are doing, I'd probably nominate a 
you know, a couple of trends um, that, you know, our listeners probably know about already, but, um, you know, medium and large agency groups are becoming much broader property services companies. Mm. They're not just focusing on the real estate transaction. And that's been happening for a few for, for a while now. But in recent years, the depth and breadth of those associated services, those property services, has grown hugely. Um, and I think that's a great thing that a local agent or agency can offer so many property-related products and services. And, and therefore, they've become more than an agent and are evolving into a really a trusted and expert property consultant uh, via a centralised model. Mm. Um, and I guess that comes back to also that sort of customer one view that we're all trying to achieve and looking after that customer or contact um, for all their property needs and right across their lifespan, in fact. And, and that's a concept that Reaper is talking about as well, that, you know, that, that you know, our agents are becoming, you know, trusted and respected property advisors. Um, as well as being very efficient with the real estate transaction itself. Yes. So I hope that makes sense in terms of property services more broadly. And that opens a whole bunch of opportunities for prop tech, obviously. Yes, yeah. And and companies or businesses that have that are offering those services have much sort of bigger, deeper, wider um, technology needs, I guess, too, to to keep all of that running and all the different parts of the transactions talking to each other and, you know, and, and pulling it all together. So Exactly. So, it's it's we're being led by the clients as well who are, you know, introducing all these all these amazing products and services across the property services spectrum. And then we're needing to link them all up quietly and integrate them and, and make all that data talk and and um, and provide a you know, a terrific UX or, or you know, uh, user experience for consumers uh, out of all that. And that's a challenge, but it's, mm. a, it's a great challenge to, to have. Um, the second area I was just going to mention was the better use of, uh, obviously, data and technology, um, which, is, which is our area, um, and aggregating that data for, for better business operations and planning. Um, we've seen this democratisation of, of real estate data and mm-hmm. general business data for that matter. Um, and it's really transforming the industry. Uh, it's so much easier these days to to aggregate data and um, and and you know and, and then move it around and share it as needed and analyze it for the benefit of of all levels of of, of your organisation for the agents, uh, officers, and group. Mm. And and look, I know that we often have conversations where we sort of say, "Oh, I'm not sure how I feel about having my data aggregated," or. It, you know, what are the benefits or the pros and cons? You know, is it really worthwhile? Is it safe? And all of that sort of stuff. But I've, I mean, as, as you know, we were talking about it before, I, I'm coming out of a period of time where I've been dealing with the health industry <laughs> where everything is in paper and on a form. And I would love it if the health industry could just adopt 10% of the technology that real estate has around data to aggregate it. Um uh, yeah, just uh, because when you go back to that old way of doing things where hospitals require you to fax information to specialists and and won't talk to you on the telephone or won't set an appointment or require a 64-page form to be filled in, which is similar to the other, you know, 75-page form, but they both have to go to different places, it's so painful and it's so inefficient and it's so stressful that it just it's in, it's it's quite hard to it's quite you kind of have to keep tapping yourself on the head. We are in 2020, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just talking about it, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. We've both gone through this week, we've both gone through the, the yeah. health system for, yeah. for, different, for different ways. And yeah, yeah, I found it extremely inefficient as well. Yeah. And people talk about, you know, that we're doing a lot of catch up in in the real estate industry in terms of technology and prop tech, look, I think we're doing pretty well and, and we've only just scratched the surface, but there's some terrific um, uh, you know, innovative stuff being done and, and process efficiencies and, and so forth. So, um, you know, we just need to, to keep going, keep collaborating, integrating, um, talking, and, and as I keep saying to everybody, uh, you know, the rising tide will lift all Lift nearly all boats. Mm. And so what does the future hold for Lee Swanson Web IT? 
Uh, well, as I said, we've been focusing really heavily on agent and agency facing services and products for, for many years now, and um, and we'll continue to do so and really refine that. And um, and that's around our, our sort of technical expertise. That's our sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the the move towards more consumer facing products um, that's an exciting one. Um, so uh, you know we'll we'll do more in that space. We're we're launching a product called Report Once Soon, um, which is very much for the uh, vendor and landlord um, as well as the agent. And what does and, that do? Well, it's basically again aggregating data and giving them um, a, a dashboard to view their listing. Um, marketing performance right okay so pulling data from multiple sources and giving a, a snapshot uh one click report once um so a very handy tool for everybody um so that's another example i guess of of um innovation for efficiency and and, and benefit to the, to the end user being the consumer mm-hmm. and that's an exciting sort of they're exciting products to roadmap with 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 clients Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what we've been doing recently. So, um, yeah, it's a very fast-moving area, um, but there's there's lots of opportunities, and we're you know, bring on that next next exciting chapter, I guess. Yeah, and and it would be lovely when we can all get together again and actually <laughs> see each other and have a wine or <laughs> have a have a beer and um and and discuss all these things as they sh- you know as all the problems of the world should be solved over. <laughs> Over a large glass of wine. A, pro- a problem shared is a problem halved, but um, oh, I thought it was a problem doubled. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only just got together with your association, didn't we, earlier in the year, and then COVID yeah. sort of uh, made that a little bit more challenging. But yeah. I wanted to say also, Kylie, thank you to you for, uh, on behalf of the industry, and getting that going. The, the Pop Tech Association of Australia—it's a really terrific initiative. Thank and I know you. you've done a huge amount of work, so thanks for all your work to date on that and anything that we can all do to help you, you know, you know a lot of us will. So, and I was looking at the, the website last night and the five goals on there are terrific. You know, I Thank think you. they really yeah. are compelling and I think if anybody hasn't had a look at that, have a look at the five goals of the association. Um, PropTechAssociation.com.au. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a good it's, it's, shout out. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. So, well done and thanks. Thank you, thank you. Um, and look, we do have our. I, I, while we're on gratuitous um, plugs, we do have an event coming up Tuesday next week where we're looking at the direct to landlord uh, disruptors. So um, interesting. If you're a property manager, come and have a look and and see those. Uh, see our speakers who are uh, are trying to cut you out of the transaction. Let, let's let's have a look at what they've got to say and what, where their heads are at because I think it's a really interesting uh interesting space and so much is going on in there but thank you Matt that was lovely um and and completely unnecessary but thank you but it has been absolutely lovely to have you on the prop tech podcast thank you so much for your time no we, we my better, pleasure we better get back to our days <laughs> yeah my pleasure Kylie thanks for having us no worries thank you okay. so that was Matt Webster from list once and web IT and Matt must be one of the loveliest people in prop tech the conversation that we had as part of this interview was one of those ones that cheered me up for the whole day now I find list once a fascinating business There is absolutely no doubt that with so much diverse technology and solutions now being developed, there is an absolute need for the less sexy but extremely important technology that is effectively the plumbing that's bringing everything together. And it's our ability as an industry to visualise how well all of these different platforms can connect to create amazing real estate services that we know our clients want. So I love that there is a business out there uh, in PropTech that can help agencies bring their vision of service together with good quality background tech and to make it a reality. So now if you've enjoyed this episode of the Prop Tech Podcast, I would love you to tell all your friends, drop me a line on LinkedIn or via email, Kylie at realcontent.guru or on our on my Facebook page. You can follow this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor and Apple iTunes. And we are coming up to 4,000 downloads. I'd like to thank my audio support, Charlie Hollins and the very fabulous Jill Escudero, our sponsors, Smidge Wines, proud to be the official wine of Australian Prop Tech. Direct Connect, making moving connections easy, and Home Prezzo Active Pipe, turning your data into amazing marketing content and amazing email marketing, which has never been more important. 
So thanks everyone. Until next week, stay safe and keep on pop-taking. <laughs>